Okay, so we've gone over defining the rational function and then finding the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And so now we're about ready to graph them. We're going to talk about a couple other key parts to, to helping us graph these. And I have them listed right here. So our guidelines for analyzing and graphing rational functions. So first, this is something we haven't done yet, is find the y-intercept, which is pretty simple. By definition, you just let x equal zero. Now there is a note here if there are any. So it is possible that you don't have a y-intercept um, because you might have a vertical asymptote located at that value. Then we will find the x-intercepts if there are any. And the way we do that is you take the numerator, just take the numerator part and set that equal to zero because by definition, you're going to let y equal zero, right? We're going to let y equal zero. And so what you have here is f of x, which is essentially your y value equal to, if you get a zero on top, as long as you have a number on bottom other than zero, that's going to simplify into a zero. So if the numerator, I guess maybe I should, I don't want to confuse this, I'll call that d of x here. Um, if the numerator is zero, zero divided by whatever is going to be a zero, as long as the denominator is not zero, but we won't have any of those cases here. It is possible for that to happen, but not anything that we're going to deal with. And so then part three, we're going to find our vertical asymptote. And the way we find that is it's the restricted values. It's the values that make the denominator equal zero. And so we just got done doing that. And then we're going to find the horizontal asymptotes. Um, if there is one, there will be one, okay? We're not going to have any of the cases where we don't. And so that's where you kind of compare the powers, the highest power on top and bottom, and we'll review that when we get there. And then what we want to do here is plot um, at least one point to the left and to the right of each vertical asymptote, if, uh, of the vertical asymptote. If there are multiple vertical asymptotes, then you need to plot three points between them and we kind of went over that back here because you need to kind of figure out, does it kind of have that little twist to it? Almost looks like a cubic function. It's not, but it's kind of got that shape to it. Or does it have more of that uh, parabola kind of U shape to it? And so those are the two different types you're going to see that happen if you have two vertical asymptotes. Okay. And then basically just go ahead and graph it and use smooth curves and all that stuff. And in a moment, I will pull up the homework and show you how you're going to graph it in the homework. It's pretty simple, but you need to extract this information in order to do that. So let's kind of go over our first one right here. So it says um, graph each rational function. So here's our first one. And so for your y-intercept, by definition, you're going to let x equal 0. So we're going to do f of 0, which equals 1 over 0 plus 2, which would give us 1 half. So I hit the y axis at 0, 1 half. So I'm going to be right here. That's where I hit the y axis right there. So I went ahead and put that point there. Then for the x intercept, by definition, what you're going to do is solve the numerator. You're going to set the numerator equal to 0 and solve. Well, the problem with that is I'm going to get 1 equals 0. That's my numerator. And so basically, I just come up with a false statement. And so I can't even solve that. And so we're not going to have an x-intercept in this particular one. Then for the vertical asymptotes, you're going to take the denominator and set that equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to take this x plus 2, set that equal to 0, and solve. And so we get x equals negative 2. Now, it's very important you put the x equals part on there. So x equals negative 2 is my vertical asymptote. Now, for the horizontal asymptote, that's going to be when you compare the powers of the, the order, so the, the highest power on top um, and the highest power on bottom. So if you look on top, I don't even have a variable. So my, under, my understood power is going to be zero. The order on top is going to be zero. The one on bottom has an understood one right there. And so if the, the power on top is less than the power on bottom, then it defaults to zero. So y equals zero like that. And if you need to review that, it's a couple pages back in the notes. Okay. 
So let's see. Let's go ahead and plot those asymptotes here. So let's see. Our vertical asymptotes can be right here at negative 2. And our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0 going across right here. And so that y-intercept is actually going to help me go ahead and start my graph um, right here. So you can find more points if you want, but I know where I'm going to be boxed in, okay? All these graphs kind of look the same. They all kind of have that same shape. Sometimes they, they're a little bit tighter than others. This one looks like it's probably going to be pretty tight in the corner here. But basically, it's just going to kind of come down here, just do a smooth curve, hit that y-intercept. And then, like I said, the asymptotes are there as guardrails. So that's just a guardrail right there. And that's good enough for me right there, just a little simple graph right there. But now I need to find another point on to the left of my vertical asymptote, which is at x equals negative 2. Now, most likely it's going to be diagonal. It's going to end up down here, okay? But not always. There's a chance they could be side by side. But most of the time they're going to be diagonal. So I need to test a point like x equal to negative 3 or 4 or 5, something like that. I'm going to go ahead and do x um, equal to negative 3. So f of negative 3 equals 1 over negative 3 plus 2, which then would give us 1 over negative 1, which equals negative 1 right there. So when x is negative 3, y is negative 1, and so that point is going to be right there, that red point I put right there. And so then once again, we're just going to try to draw this with a smooth curve, and so I'm going to go up and to the left and kind of follow that asymptote right there and then go down and follow that asymptote right there. So try to put a curve on it, but there we go. Not beautiful, but that'll work. And so that's what I'm telling you. The guardrails, the, the asymptotes are there to help you. Once you have those, it's really kind of easy. You just have to find a few points. Sometimes you get those points from your x and y intercepts sometimes you won't sometimes you'll have to just play around with it now what i'm going to do is i do want to pull up the homework and show you how to graph this because it is going to be a little different than what i'm doing here you'll probably find it a little bit easier so let me go ahead and do that okay so this is what it's going to look like on your homework right here so this is pretty similar to the one we just did except this one says x minus two and so it says uh, to graph the rational function, first click the point where the horizontal and vertical asymptotes intersect. Then click any other point on the graph that's going to be part of that graph. So if you look here, if we look at this particular one, uh, my vertical asymptote this time is going to be at uh, 2, at x equals 2. And my horizontal asymptote is going to be at 0, right? Because... Uh, at y equals 0 because my numerator power is less than my denominator power. So where those two asymptotes intersect is right here where my point set. So see it when x is 2 and when y is 0, that's where they intersect. So there's my asymptotes. And then from here, I just need to click one point that is part of the graph. So let's see, what would the y-intercept be? So if I let x equal 0, that would give me negative 1 half, which would be right there. And that should work. So you just click the point where the x and y intercept intersect and then find another point. If you have a y intercept, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Sometimes you might have an x intercept and you can click that point or you might just have to find some random one. And so let's go ahead and submit. Very good. So it's correct. So that's how these first couple are going to be. Then eventually when the graphs get pretty complicated where you have multiple asymptote, vertical asymptotes, it's actually going to be a multiple choice where you're going to be given four graphs and you have to pick the right graph that matches. And so when we get there, I'll probably show you an example of that also just so you can see that. Okay, so back here, let's go ahead and try another one of these. And so for our y-intercept, you uh, evaluate the function at zero. So f of 0, so we're going to have 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 2, which gives us 4 over negative 2, which simplifies to a negative 2. So when I let x equal 0, y came back as negative 2, which is going to be right there. Okay, 
Then for the x-intercept, you take the numerator and set that equal to 0. So for my x-intercept, you're going to take the numerator and set that equal to 0. So we're going to have x plus 4, set that equal to 0. And we'll subtract 4 from both sides. And we're going to get x equals negative 4. So when x is negative 4, y will come back as a 0. And if you want to, you can plug it in and you can see what happens is your numerator will become 0, your denominator will be negative 6, and 0 divided by negative 6 is 0. So that's why the y value comes back as a 0 right there. So we'll go ahead and plot that point. We have that right here. Okay. Then for the vertical asymptote, for a vertical asymptote, you take the denominator and set that equal to 0. Okay, so we'll take the x minus 2, set that equal to 0, add 2 to both sides. So we're going to get x equals 2. So at x equals 2, we have a vertical asymptote. And then for the horizontal asymptote, you look at the powers, and the powers are the same. So then you take you divide the coefficients of those two uh, x values right there, 1 divided by 1. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So this time we have a horizontal asymptote at 1. Because this time they both had x's to powers of 1. Those were the highest powers on top and bottom. You take the coefficients and take the ratio of that. So let's go ahead and plot that information on here. So let's see, my vertical asymptote is at 2. Okay. And my horizontal asymptote is at 1. Right there. Now, once again, I pretty much have enough information to graph the left side of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's see. So, and this one comes out a little bit wider than the first one. It's not so tight. It's not so tight right there. And then just go along the guardrail right here, your asymptote. It's going to be your guardrail. And there you go. So there's the first half. But then I need to plot one on the other side over here. Once again, it's probably going to be diagonal. But it is possible that it could be side by side. So I need to pick a point to plug in over here. So I could plug in 3 or 4. It doesn't really matter. Let's just go with 3. So f of 3. Let's see, so we're going to get 3 plus 4 over 3 minus 2. So we're going to get 7 over 1, which equals 7. And so when x is 3, y is 7. So let's see, 3, 7, right there. And if you wanted to find another point, you can. But really, I'm fine just... Go ahead, draw this, and kind of curve it down into your next guardrail, just like that, and I'm fine with that. That's good enough for me. Okay, so on your homework, same idea. What you're going to do is you plot where the where they intersect the, uh, the asymptotes, and then pick one of the – it doesn't matter. You can pick any of these three points that I have plotted here, and it should just populate on your screen, and it should be fairly simple. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so same idea here. So for the y-intercept, you let x equal 0, so f of 0. And so let's see, we're going to get negative 3 times 0 plus 4 over 0 plus 2. So we're going to get 4 over 2, which is 2. So my y-intercept is going to be at 0, 2. Then for the x-intercept, we're going to let the numerator, we're going to set the numerator equal to 0 and solve that. Okay. Let's do a little algebra here. So subtract 4 from both sides. And then divide by negative 3. And so... A negative divided by a negative, that's going to become positive 4 thirds right there. So let's see. Um, so when I let x equal 4 thirds, my y value will come back as a 0. And we'll go ahead and plot those real quick. 
So let's see, we have one at zero, two. Right there, and then at four thirds, which is going to be one and a third, basically, so about right there. Okay. Then for our vertical asymptote, we'll go ahead and set the denominator equal to zero. So x plus two, set that equal to zero. So we're going to subtract two from both sides. We're going to get x equals negative 2. And then for your horizontal asymptote, that's where you look here and, okay, the powers are the same on top and bottom for the leading coefficient. Or the, I'm sorry, the leading term. And so now you take the coefficients and do the ratio of that. So negative 3 divided by 1. Negative 3 divided by 1 would be negative 3. So y equals negative 3 is where that's going to be located. So let's go ahead and put that on my graph. So x equals negative 2 is this vertical line here. y equals negative 3 is this horizontal line right here. And then like I said, when you're doing your homework, it should be pretty simple. You'll start by selecting the intersection point of your asymptotes, and then you can select your y-intercept, and it should populate on your screen. But I'm going to go ahead. I need to finish graphing this. So, so on the right side, that's pretty easy. I have enough information. I can graph this. Just graph it with a curve coming down like so, like that, going up like that. And then once again, it's probably going to be diagonal, but we're going to double check. So I need to plug in... Uh, a value over here. So I could plug in negative 3 or negative 4, whatever you want. Let's see. Let's go with the negative, uh, or let's go, yeah, negative 3 is fine. So f of negative 3 is going to be equal to negative 3 times negative 3 plus 4 divided by negative 3 plus 2. Okay, this one's going to be kind of interesting. I'm glad I picked this one, but it will be a little bit off the screen, so I might want to find another one in a second. So let's see. Um, then let's see. This would simplify into a positive 9 plus 4 over a negative 1, which would give us 13 over negative 1, which then is negative 13. So that's going to be a little off my screen down here, which not that big of a deal. I could still just use that point and draw this. But to make sure I'm a little bit more accurate, I'm going to go ahead and find another point. Let's find, you could find f of negative 4 if you want. I'm going to do f of negative 5 just to do something a little different here. So we plug this into the function up here. I'm just plugging it in for x. Okay. So negative 3 times negative 5 plus 4 over negative 5 plus 2. And so let's see, what does that give us? So we're going to get positive 15 plus 4 divided by negative 3. So we're going to get 19 over negative 3. And so if you were to put that into a calculator, it would be like negative 6.6 .6 repeating. Okay, so let's see, or I'm sorry. I'm off a little bit there. Negative 6.3 repeating. There we go. Okay. So let's see. So at negative 5, when x is negative 5, we're going to be at negative 6.3. So about right there. Okay. And that's good enough. I'm ready to go ahead and draw this. And so once again, this one is not very tight in the corner, right? We saw some, the first one we did went really tight inside that corner. This one kind of comes across pretty wide right here. So let's see, coming down here like that. And then this is just curve it up like that. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and look at one more in the homework just to make sure you're comfortable with how to, how to plot these. Okay, so this, I pulled up another example here. So once again, I want to plot, I, I want to start by finding the intersection of the, the asymptotes. So my vertical asymptote is going to be at negative 2, so right here. But now my y asymptote, my, my horizontal is going to be at negative 1. So I'm going to plot that right there. So this is, this is where the asymptotes intersect. 
So you take the denominator, set that equal to zero and solve. That's how I figured out the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote, we had the same power, so you took the ratio of the coefficients, which gave me negative one, which is right there. So y equals negative one is that horizontal. So it does have a y-intercept, so I should just go ahead and find that. That'd probably be the easiest thing. So if I let x equal zero right here, then my my y value would come back as negative one half. So right there. So I'm gonna plot that right there. I also could have found an x-intercept by taking the numerator and setting that equal to zero. And um, that would, oh, I plotted that wrong. That should be negative. I said, I said it, but then I plotted positive one half. Let me clear that real quick. Um, I'm glad I did that. So that might be something for y'all to think about because I did this and then realized, wait a second, my x-intercept is supposed to be, um, it's different than that. It should be, um, at negative one, not positive one. So right there, there we go. So now I realize, oh, there's my x-intercept. So that's probably a good idea. Make sure you find your x and y-intercepts and then you can just double check to make sure it looks right. And so that should be good. Let's go ahead and submit it. There we go, it's correct. So anyways, the next couple of examples are gonna have multiple uh, vertical asymptotes. And so those will be multiple choice on your homework. And so we'll go ahead and look at that in our third part on our video. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and, and uh, continue in part three.